Hello. So let me just kind of, yeah. All right. Yes. All right. Good. So good to see you guys. Right. Um, it's always great pleasure to be here. Uh, feels like home. And uh, thanks to all the organizers, uh, I know how hard it is to put up a show like this. Um, so thank you. And uh, thank you for coming here. It uh, speaks a lot about who you are and what your commitment is. Um, you may not realize that, but hopefully in this session you will actually realize uh, what is special about you. Um, so I don't want to really do too much of uh, an introduction. Um, the talk is uh, about dream chasing. And uh, I had a lot of dreams. And uh, one of the decisions that I made as in, uh, very early in my childhood, uh, my dad uh, is a chain smoker, was a chain smoker. And uh, there was this ad that I saw in magazines and that read basically saying that I will get what I want. And when I used to see that, I made two decisions in my life. One, I will never smoke. And two, I will get, a, I will get what I want. Uh, those two decisions have actually driven my life. And I've always been number one. Um, schools, I was number one. Uh, whether that is academics, whether that is um, co-curriculars, I was always number one. I started my business when I was 18 years, but I started making money when I was 7th um, seventh, seventh grade. 7th seventh grade, 8th grade, ninth grade. Um, so I've done a lot of things over the past um, 22 years that I've run the business for. And I've seen lots of success. Um, so we'll talk about success, we'll talk about um, failures also, but we'll more specifically talk about chasing your own dreams. So while I'll talk about my stories, uh, what will really make uh, this, you know, whatever 30 minutes important for you is if you actually start looking at your life and your dreams, right? I guess uh, your dreams are more important than my dreams for you at least. I hope. Yeah. So let's start. So story number one, um, this is about Three, uh, three years ago and uh, you know, we are chasing targets. Uh, the business is doing well, but you know, we've launched a lot of products, a lot of new plugins, and they are not picking up that well as we had anticipated. So we are seeing some sales, but not as much as we want. Um, we're seeing support requests and then you know, there is a lot of struggle. The team is small, we still are a small team. Uh, we have huge resource crunch, things are growing and we want to grow, but we can't grow, you know, can't find enough talent all of that is going on at the same time. And um, uh, Karthik has given us like, you know, $1 million ka target, like, you know, go to chase that, I'm chasing it, chasing it, and uh, not able to make it, right? So $1 million looks like the elusive goal, you know, uh, spreading it out, but not making it. Uh, and there's a lot of struggle. Now, while I'm just sitting there struggling, struggling and almost like giving up and trying to come up with some new ideas of how can we actually grow from here. Uh, I actually chanced upon something very interesting and I came up with uh, what I now call the 10x formula. Uh, so 10x formula was like, if very simple. Basically on a website, if you want to make sales, if you want to grow your website, if you want to grow any business, uh, there are three factors. One is you go to get leads, you go to get people walk into your store, that is visitors. Uh, then you go to sell them something at that point in time. And then you want to be able to sell them something again in the future. So if you double your traffic, if you double your conversion rate, and if you triple your ARPU, which is average revenue per user, the kind of money that you make per customer, you essentially have a 12x business model, right? Or 12x hota nahi, apan thoda like rounded out, so that's why it's called 10x. But if you apply this strategy, your business can definitely go 10x. Now that was a great strategy. Uh, it did work for us also. But what is really interesting to learn here is that whenever you are facing a complex problem, 
if you apply your scientific mind and break it down into smaller pieces and then deal with each one at its individual level, you will have a much higher chance of success. So instead of going at, like, okay, let's do $1 million as a revenue target, right? We said, okay, let's keep it aside. We'll get there. But can we do 2x traffic? Can we do 2x conversion? Can we do 3x ARPU? Right? And we made improvements in each of that. We've still not hit 1 million, but you know, we've come a long way. Uh, the real lesson is break it down into smaller pieces so that you can chew it. Okay. So 10x kept on happening like that. You know, scientific method of uh, you know, applying, your, uh, applying scientific method to your problems does always work, and you know, we've seen that work. But along with that, uh, the other thing that I realized is that, you know, uh, that need of always winning, right? That I always want to win. I always want to be number one. So uh, before, I want to give you an answer to that. But before, let's do this. That what is keeping us from achieving our dreams? Because I'll give you my answers. But what's really important is about your dreams. So what do you think? What keeps you away from achieving your dreams. I think the first thing is very simple. Um, we always ask, what do I need to do to achieve my goal? What we should really be asking is, who do I need to be to achieve my goal? And there is a subtle difference. right? So doing is important, but being is more important. You got to understand that what kind of a person you'll have to become to take those actions, because your being comes before your actions, right? So I won't go much into the details, but basically ask your question, uh, ask yourself this question: that who do I need to be to achieve that goal? What kind of a person do I need to be? Because the actions will automatically happen. So next, if you aren't better, work harder. We want to succeed, but uh, we may not be good at certain things. Like uh, we may not be good at coding. Somebody else may be better at that than us. Then what do we do? Work harder. Because you know, no company can keep you around just for showing up. They'll keep you around, and they'll actually be happy for you and give you growth if you're growing them. If, if you're contributing to the business growth, you're taking care of customers, there is no problem that they will have to give you growth. So work harder if you're not better, but get better. If you work harder, you're going to get better. And it's required in today's days, it's really important. So you want to know the truth about being number one? How many of you actually want to be number one? Like, I may be the odd one out, but like, oh, there are some more odd ones. Yeah. So, do you want to hear like the truth about being number one? Anybody? Yeah, you want to hear the truth? Yes, okay. So the truth, the real truth about being number one is that it's okay to be number two also. Yeah? It really doesn't matter that much. Uh, we struggle so much to be number one that even when we are number two, number three, number four, number ten, we like kill ourselves. Are number one nahi Are bhai, number ten bhi hai na? Uh, there, there is a statistics that uh, in golf, the difference between the number one golfer and the tenth player is just 1.9 shots. Like, you know, you have to take shots in golf, and then it's just like, let's say, two shots. So the number one player reached there two shots before the number 10th player. The money that they make is vastly different. It's not just two shots. So yes, if you are number one, you do get a lot more reward. But really, it's OK to be number two. It's OK to be number three. Because what's really important is for you to be there in the game. 
if you're not number one and if you quit the game, or if you're number 10 and if you quit the game, are you ever going to be number one? If you stay in the game, there is a chance for you to be number one. If you go out of the game, there is no chance, right? So that is the real truth about being number one. So story number two. And, uh, you know, uh, I don't know how many of you know, but I call myself an entrepreneur geek because I'm geek first, entrepreneur later, but entrepreneur is more important, that pays the bills, so entrepreneur comes first. But I love coding and uh, I love solving problems. So we have this uh, plugin called Icegram and another solution called Putler, and for which we wanted to build a little solution. So essentially what we wanted to do was we wanted to take this kind of input of uh, user data that if we have an email address or if we have phone number, if we have the address of the person, we wanted to kind of clean it up, validate it, right? Normalize it and enrich it. What does that mean? So if somebody is given a bad email address and because you know we have a email subscription, email marketing plugin, whenever somebody subscribes, we want to make sure that it's not a fake email. We want to make sure that it's a clean email. If somebody is saying Nirav uh, plus one, two, three at gmail.com, we want to normalize that to Nirav at gmail.com because it's all the same and stuff like that. And uh, for our WooCommerce plugins, we want to kind of normalize the address also. Whatever address people have entered in, we need to convert that into a format that we can query on. Uh, if you had to solve this problem, what do you think, how hard this problem would be? How many days will it take you kind of solve this? Any takes, developers, star developers, you know, the plenty of uh, ace developers in the crowd. So if you had to kind of do this much, how much time will it take you? Guesses? I won't hire you if you say one week. I won't hire you if you say one year either, but anything? No? Too hard a problem to crack? No? Too, like it's just a matter of few hours, maybe? No? Six to seven hours, very good. Okay, maybe less, yes. Any, anybody else? Four hours, nice. I'm getting some candidates. Anybody else? All right. Um, go Google. Falsehoods programmers believe. Okay. Uh, anybody who is into programming, you go do this, you know, and it's going to give you a list of uh, things that we believe to be true but are not. Okay. Like for email validation, if you did anything other than at the rate, it's going to be wrong. Because people can have email addresses. I mean, the RFC spec allows email addresses of all sorts. Uh, if, if you think that uh, when people had to, okay, let me just go back, go back. Are we back? No? Where are we? Okay, good. So, uh, for example, uh, if you think that people will enter addresses properly, that's wrong. If you think people will always enter California instead of CA, I mean, people will enter CA. People will enter California. Now you'll even make that condition, ah, okay, I'm smart, you know, California or CA. I'll validate both of them. I'll convert both of them into CA state. What if they make a spelling mistake? Now what do you do? Okay, uh, oh, I'll give them a drop down. But what if they're coming from a country that doesn't understand English, then? Right, so there are tons of things that uh, make this problem hard. And, uh, but one can argue that, uh, okay, we can just use Google APIs and let Google do all this work and, you know, we can just use their mapping APIs and convert an address to a lawnlet that is what we want. But what if you want to do this for a free plugin? Okay, somebody will come and argue that, okay, don't do it for a free plugin, you're going to burn the money, right? That's not a good business model. All right, fine, even if I'm charging, what if I want to do it for millions of records every day? Now, that's the problem we have. 
Okay, we we have a free plugin for which we want to do this, and we have a business analytics service which processes millions of transactions per day for which we need to do this. It's a real hard problem. Okay, because you, we cannot use a third-party API even like Google because it's too expensive, right? So what we had to do, and this is live. I mean. Uh, but what we had to do was use open source uh, systems and kind of work through it and find a solution that will be almost real time. Uh, this was done in three milliseconds. Uh, yeah, this is three milliseconds MS. Uh, the entire thing, it takes a lot of uh, data in and processes it, does a lot of things. But I'll be fooling you, it's not really three milliseconds, it's actually cached. Um, but yeah, it does a lot of things. So it's a hard problem. The only thing that I want to tell you is that it's a hard problem. Now, hard problems require geniuses to solve the problems. Uh, I solved it. <laughs> All right, that's a joke. But, um, you know, OK, so how many of you interested in being a genius? Or at least being called a genius? Like other people see you as a genius. मतलब होना नहीं वाला अलग बात है लेकिन लाइक दूसरों को ऐसे लगना चाहिए कि तुम जीनियस हो हेल्प्स राइट आई मीन राइट सो द ट्रिक विथ बीइंग जीनियस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इनोवेशन इज नथिंग बट जस्ट टेकिंग सम ओल्ड आइडियाज एंड मेकिंग न्यू कनेक्शंस राइट सो देर इज something already out there and then you're making a new connection that's all there is about innovation because most of it is innovation and not invention and uh, every great idea it's a formula i mean it goes through five phases the first thing that you have to do to innovate or to become genius is to uh, really think hard about the problem like you have to really study it well so you have to first Define your problem, and then you have to go deep into it, right? You have to study a lot. You have to, you know, go through a lot of material. Then what you do is, once you've done all that studying, you know, that second bit is done. You have to take a break. So you have to walk away from the problem. Now, once you walk away from the problem, there'll be some time suddenly, especially when you're in the shower that something will just hit, right? And that's the genius. Because then you get something which is like an epiphany, some new idea that was kind of culmination of everything that you did before. All you have to do now is go back, you know, assess the idea, put it into a proper form, and the last fifth step is remaining is just test it out in the world, that whether this idea really works or not. So. Uh, that's the trick about being genius. I kind of applied that trick to solve this problem that we had. If anybody is interested in learning how we solve this problem, you know, you can meet me afterwards. It's, it's pretty interesting. I could do a talk on that, but yeah. So that's the trick about being genius. All right. So genius is okay, uh, but we have lots of these tech problems right now, like, you know, React and Gutenberg and uh, content. Uh, only frameworks and then headless word WordPress and whatnot. And this is going to just grow. So how do you survive all this mess of maddening technology? So you want to learn some new technology. How many of you want to learn React? Nice. How many of you want to learn something new in the next six months? Yeah, you better do, right? Uh, so every time I've tried to learn a new technology, I've almost gone nuts, okay? Uh, and I love technology. But what has brought me back and what has centered me is asking this one question. I'm guessing you want to know that question. Yeah, all right. So the question is, no matter what technology it is, what's the purpose? Who are you building it for? What does your user really want? 
So I may be building the fanciest geolocation stuff in the world, okay, that like works in so milliseconds and that just uses open source data. But boss, who wants it? How do they want it? That is what is most important. Because you will build the coolest of technology, but if your user doesn't want it, what's the point? Yes, there is a point you get that satisfaction, but beyond that, what's the point? So anytime you're really going crazy after a new technology, you're trying to figure out some React stuff and you know that NPM module and then whatever that new ES6 syntax is driving you crazy, take a break, chai coffee low, whatever, and ask, what am I really here for? What am I trying to solve? That problem, that technical problem that you're trying to solve is not really the problem. There is a business problem. There is a user problem that you're trying to solve. What is that problem? Get in touch with that and you'll have your solution quickly. All right? well, that's my method of surviving tech chaos. The other thing is uh, distinguishing between studying and learning. So while I'm speaking here and I'm giving you a lot of gyan like a baba, when you'll enjoy it and you'll go back home and you'll say, haan, kuch naya sikhne mila. All that won't make a difference at all. Okay? Because all you're doing is just learning. So learning is accumulating knowledge and information and all you'll have at the end of it is knowledge. Does knowledge make a difference? Yes? All right. Somewhat. Okay, does knowledge alone make a difference? So you've got to have some knowledge, but until, until you put that knowledge to practice, that knowledge is worth nothing. Yeah, correct. So you've got to turn it into a skill. You've got to turn it into some kind of practice. Uh, because a knowledge that is not invested is a knowledge wasted. So if you're like listening, if you're sitting here for all these three days, you've got so many new concepts and tomorrow you'll go out and then you'll be like, Achha, I'm on Twitter and social media pe thoda kar diya, and that's the end of it. I'm sorry, I mean, you wasted your time. Right? And that's not in, that's, that was never the intention of the organizers, that was never the intention of WordPress. So what really matters is take all that knowledge, information, and put it to practice. Put something to practice, put one thing to practice. Then you'll see some results, and then it'll be worth your time. Right? And that, that applies to everything, that applies to React, that applies to ASX, that applies to whatever, JavaScript, whatever. Okay? So, yes. Um, part two. Right? You didn't expect that. You thought there was only one answer. So what keeps us from attaining our dreams? Part two. The answer is already on the screen. Right? I thought I'll forget, so I'll just put a hint for myself. Um, really, if you think about it, what keeps you from attaining your goals is your E to E ratio. Your E versus E ratio. What is the E versus E ratio? Your entertainment to education ratio. How much time do you spend on education and how much time do you spend on entertainment? That ratio, my dear friends, will determine the success you will have in your life. Really. You may not like me for saying that, my wife may not like me for saying that, but that is the truth. The top 20% performers of the world spend a lot more time educating themselves and their teams than entertaining them. So yes, do, all, do en entertainment that you need to do, but maintain a healthy balance. You got to spend more time, energy, effort, money on education than on entertainment. Right? Just a simple math. Movie, food, dining out, whatever. Just do the total. How much money you spent on that? How much time you spend on that in the last one month, six months, whatever? And how much time, money, energy you spent on education? You'll know your answer. Okay? You want to always tilt it towards education than anything else. 
All right, ready for story three? Okay, so because I talked about entertainment, this story is also linked to entertainment. Um, so I, I told you I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a geek, and I'm really a geek beyond technology. So, you know, recently we've got into games, like family, playing games. So, uh, you know, I was going for a conference and we wanted to prepare some swags, like something to gift. And uh, I got all crazy and I created a game. Okay, so we actually built a game. Uh, okay. Do you have it in with you? So that's that's a game that we created, um, and a lot of people loved it. I did not have enough time to actually make it for everybody. We have a few, only a few. Uh, it's a fun game. Every time we play with family, you know, people love it. Uh, it's called Demon. Um, and I wanted to give it as a free stuff swag, I told you, but maybe next time. Um, so, yeah. And and my wife is questioning me, why you have to go to US, you have to finish all these deadlines before going there. Why are you working on this? Like, really? Like, why are you spending endless time and nights just doing this? If nothing else, at least sleep, right? I mean, don't don't work on this till four o'clock in the morning and, and you know, next day you have so, so much of other work to do also. Um, but that's the geek, right? Um, so anyways, back to this. Um, so we have a uh, few people, my team is here, wearing these uh, badges, okay? Gray t-shirts and these badges. We have um, three games with each. At the end of the session, you know, in the tea break, you can go find them and uh, you can just tell them, and I'm making it at run time, is you can just tell them what are you going to take from this three days of WordCamp and practice into your life. Okay? Gyan mat dena, main bahut gyan deta We don't need more gyan from you. So, practically kya karoge? You know, tell that to one of my teammates. Okay? And if they like it, they'll give you the game. Make sense? All right, okay. Thank you. Um, right, so back to the story. So I'm making all this game and then my family and maybe my team also, you know, they don't tell me on the face, but I'm sure they question. Hey, what are you doing up there? You know, like spending all this time working on designs and illustrator and then coordinating printing. But it's because of this. Achievement is always going to be less than fulfillment. And fulfillment is always going to be more important than achievement. So, Pepe Post will probably become, let's say, the number one email provider, so, uh, you know, email sending service provider for people. And that'll be a great achievement for them. But what will be a great satisfaction for them? Right? So, if they be a kind of sees that, okay, that 8 billion number is great, but out of those 8 billion emails that they sent out, okay, if even 1,000 of those emails made a real difference, okay, in some people's life, it, it, it turned their businesses around, it made some good to the world, I think that is what will make him happier than all the other numbers put together. So achievement is important, fulfillment is even more important. So, y you really got to be asking yourself that, okay, uh, what fulfills me? What is my real passion? And then do that. Now, that brings me to the next slide. Uh, part three. Right? So, the question doesn't end. What keeps us from attaining our goals? Because we're talking about dream chasing. See, when we're talking about dream chasing, there are two words in here already, and it's loaded already. We're talking about a dream when you're talking about chasing. Uh, so tell me, when does the chase end? Does the chase ever end? The chase never ends. The chase never ends. Exactly. Yeah. It's not even once one dream is over. 
it's before that dream is over you have another dream most likely for and if you're like me for folks like me once your dream is 30 percent over now you have four more dreams okay so what what really keeps us from attaining that goal is that we are always chasing it and we are always thinking about the destination we're not thinking about the journey we're not thinking about the now we're not thinking of the present we're always thinking about the future so why that game is important for me is because that game gives me happiness with my family now why that game is important for me is because if you play that game with your family that's going to give you happy moments right now and more than your business those happy moments are more important for me okay that's why i do those crazy things that i do so whenever you're thinking about just the destination you you're doing it wrong you got to enjoy the process also because for example i was talking to a friend and he says um, you know i want to be free so once i get this 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 then i'll be free and i asked him all right so i get it that you want to be free but if you cannot be free now how will you ever get free then if you cannot get freedom in the moment how in the world are you going to experience freedom at the end of it if you cannot be happy in the moment how in the world are you going to be happy at the end of it right so even if you're just learning a new technology even if you're building your first website even if you're taking those baby steps in content marketing what really is important is enjoying the process if you do not enjoy the process you will burn yourself out you will never reach the goal so enjoy the process as much as you're driven to get to the goal that is important uh my f- my friend and mentor told me about ikigai uh and i just love the concept just google for it you'll get it but essentially what i get out of it is that you want to be doing things and you want to be spending your time and energy on this intersection of ikigai where something that you're good at something that you love doing something that the world needs and something that the world will pay for okay that's the ikigai it's a great phenomenal concept i i definitely encourage you guys to learn more about it obviously you can buy the book but you can get a lot of things online just by googling for ikigai also and but i have a twist to that also okay and i tell my team um in your life see most of us actually choose our careers much earlier in life right so when you are in 10th you are asked to choose the stream you want to go for science commerce whatever you know you have to choose your career early on in your life uh, i would say ask yourself what kind of a life do you want then choose a career okay so uh, in my case for example i was very clear that i do not want to travel a lot to go to my workplace so i had the privilege um, i always kept my offices 10 minutes distance from wherever i was living so i could just reach office in 10 minutes right if it was raining like it rains in mumbai i could just walk but that's a, that's a privilege that i had because i was starting my office right um obviously you can also do that choice but what's really important is that you got to be clear about what you want and then build your life accordingly but most of us don't have that choice so what do you do so you're stuck in a profession for example if you're stuck working with me you have a hard time right i mean you get to work on a lot of interesting problems but you have lots of challenges right what do you do and uh, there will be moments when you will not really enjoy the work that you're doing i would say again one more truth is that 80% of it you will not enjoy 80% of your work you will not enjoy even if you are sitting in that ikigai position 
it's the rest. It's the rest that's important and you want to be looking forward to that. So every time you're stuck in that 80% piece of you know, work that you do not enjoy, whether that's talking to clients, writing that code, supporting customers or making that design, whenever you're stuck doing that 80% that you do not enjoy, just be okay. Do not resist, accept it, embrace it, and look forward to the other 20%. Right, because your profession is something that you chose. Okay, turn it into your vocation, turn it into your passion. So turn your profession into a passion if you didn't get the profession that you are passionate about. Get it? Like, if you got lemons, make lemonade. Find love. Discover love in whatever you've got. Okay, don't just keep chasing love. You'll never get it. So if you're stuck with a bad job, I don't think it's really that bad a job. Really, there are tons of plenty of good things about it. If it's really that bad, you can change it, but really think twice, right? If you're stuck with a bad client, uh-huh, change the client. <laughs> All right. So the last story of the day. Um, so that's me with a lot of hair. I don't like that. Uh, not the head part, but the falling part. So, you know, every now and then, I get into this downward spiral, uh, which is where things are completely stuck. Nothing seems to be working. Everything seems to be going wrong. Okay, like, just recently, uh, so tons of things going on. My dad has cancer, and, you know, that's kind of deteriorated so I have to take care of that um, we have tons of things going on in office lots of product releases lots of things to do in marketing um, and just the kind of problems that you saw right I mean hard problems that I have to solve and I feel stuck I feel alone I feel overwhelmed I question like Q And I can't figure out a way. Uh, and when that happens, uh, it's like a downward spiral. It's like I'm going down faster and faster and faster. So I don't enjoy the work that I'm doing. I'm probably getting irritated with smaller things and a whole lot of things. And why I bring that up? Because you will face this or something similar in your life more often than you like. I hope it's not as bad, but uh, you will face these downward spirals. How do you deal with that? Right, because you want to chase your dreams. You want to go after the big things and you're stuck down there falling, tumbling down. Um, so what has worked for me is, is what I've now called um, a three-step formula, which is not the arm, but it's A plus A plus A equals M. The first A stands for awareness. So if I'm aware that I'm stuck, when I uh, get aware that, okay, I'm into this downward spiral, then only I can do anything because awareness precedes change. Before you can change anything, you have to be aware of it. Measurement precedes awareness. So until you measure something, you cannot even be aware of it. But I kind of measure, I kind of track myself that what is the change in behavior in me that, okay, am I getting irritated? Am I... Uh, uh, eating late at nights? Am I doing late nights? Am I just, am I skipping my exercise? Am I skipping my good habits? When that happens, that's a clear sign that I'm in that downward spiral. Okay? So I want to be aware that I'm in a downward spiral first and foremost. 
Once I'm aware of my downward spiral, the next step is the hardest step. The next step is to accept it. And acceptance is really hard. Anybody who has had a heartbreak knows how hard it is to accept. Now we're not hopefully we're not talking about that those kind of heartbreaks so often. But whenever you are in a tough situation, you basically want to just run away. You do not want to deal with it. You just want somebody else to deal with it. And you don't want to deal with it. But what really makes a difference, what will really make a difference to you and your life and your people around you is if you accept that situation as it is. Don't fight it. Uh, it may not be your fault, right? It may be the circumstance, but just accept it as it is. Because this is magical. Once you accept it, that bulb will go light up again. You know that bulb that happened in the shower earlier? That bulb will come again. Because then you'll find a way out. And once you find the way out, all you have to do is act. That's the next A. Act. And if you cannot figure out, if, if the bulb doesn't go like, okay, the electricity board doesn't like you very much and they've cut off your power supply, whatever. If the bulb doesn't go out again, I mean, if, if the light doesn't go, all you have to do, still act. What can you act? Pick up something small, pick up something, the simplest action that you can take at the moment. If you're stuck in a problem, the simplest, mo if, if the simplest action that you can think of at that moment is to go out and run, go out and run. As in like, not run away, but like run as in exercise or cycle. Just do one action. Don't sulk and like, you know, cry on yourself and take pity on yourself. I mean, you can do that, no problem, no problem with tears. but. Beyond that, don't just keep sulking. Get out. Take action. Take any action, by the way. And then think about the next action. And then think about the next action. And then think about the next action. Why? Because that feeds into itself. And it creates momentum. And momentum, my friends, is the key. Once you get something into momentum, there is nothing stopping it. No matter how hard the problem is, no matter how big the challenge is, no matter how impossible the dream looks like, once you set in motion, once you are in momentum, you are bound to get it. And this is simple formula. Just act, act, act. That's going to be momentum. So we told you about dreaming. I'm now inviting you to stop dreaming. Because that's the reality. Most of us walk half asleep. Like we are just in the daydreams. Yes, yes. Pata nahi bhi uthte ke nahi uthte, right? But we like, achha, ye karenge, ye karenge, ye karenge, mera ye startup hai, mera ye funding ho jayega, main itna billion kamayega, ye karega, wo karega, arre, kaam kabhi karega. So working, doing the actions is most important. That builds the momentum, that's going to get you to your dreams. So take action. Because like I said, consistency is the ultimate key to success. Do small things, do them repeatedly, that will compound. Thank you.